Supposing you want to use your carefully crafted Bryce scene as a backdrop in Dust Studio. Right, to achieve this I'm going to use a product made by Huro and myself, the uh, Spherical Mapper, which is available at dust3d.com and uh, that's just going to be used to uh, change the mapping of our scene so it's appropriate for applying to a sphere which we're going to export into Dust Studio. That's essentially the whole process. So uh, at the moment I've got an empty scene so I suppose I should put something in it so I'll put a cube in it uh, and a torus in it and a cylinder in it and let's have a, a pyramid so that's the extent of my scene and I'm going to capture it from the center somewhere and to do that I'm going to need to get my spherical mapper so I've already loaded that into the object library and it's here so I get my spherical mapper and I place that at the world origin so I need to couple this to the camera so now I know that's at the world origin I just select my camera go to the attributes and set the cameras origin to the same as that as the as the, the lens and then I select the lens which is in this uh, light blue family here the cyan go to the attributes and link it to the perspective camera which now means if I lift the camera up in the air and position it the lens stays in an appropriate place uh, one of the modification I need to make I've got to alter the document setup so it's a 2 to 1 ratio for the spherical map that's the way the lens is set up that's the way it works Oh, and the other thing is I need to change the render mode to 360 degree panoramic projection. So now everything is in place to capture the scene. In this case, not a very exciting scene. But it's, you can see it's got the sky and the ground and these objects in. So I'll just let that render out. Now, bear in mind that that is not a very high resolution image for a full 360 degree by 180 degree spherical map. But for speed, I've used of this low resolution. So file and I'll uh, save as send test 1. Right, so I've saved that and it won't take very long to save because there's not much in it. I'll sweep everything away. So I've just selected everything, delete it. What have we got there? I think that's the lens still there. I don't need that either. And I'm going to change the projection mode back to perspective projection, create a sphere, edit it and enlarge it and then I modify the material for that sphere I'm going to give it diffuse and ambience and diffuse and ambience and select picture go into the texture source editor open an empty slot find my spherical map open that check and make sure this mapping mode is set to spherical okay having done that now and I'll just give it a bit of ambient to uh, to light it up. You can see in the little preview here, and if I render it, that we've now, instead of viewing the scene, we're just viewing the inside of the sphere with this projection on. And I think you can see here that uh, the resolution of the spherical map is not sufficient for this size of image, bearing in mind the angular view we've got. So the angle of view, obviously, if it fits like at 90 degrees, and this was in its entirety the entire width of the screen and now we're compressing uh, a quarter we're stretching rather a quarter of that across the screen you can see that you need to record your spherical maps when you render them at a much higher resolution so you'd have to go into the document setup and increase the resolution there and if necessary use render to disk or other techniques to generate much larger images depending on the size of the backdrop but for the purpose of demonstration let's send this over to Dust Studio so I'll do is send to Dust Studio and that will launch Dust Studio and it might transfer the object. I've not been entirely successful in getting this to transfer the object every time so it usually takes a second attempt. I'll just get rid of that window. Bear in mind I know very little about Dust Studio so hopefully I'm not telling you wrong here. Right, I've deleted everything in the scene tab. I'll go back to Bryce now and do the uh, send to Dust Studio again go to Dust Studio and now you can see there you go the sphere is is in the backdrop somewhere and we can position the camera inside this sphere and move it around and presumably you could then at this point start bringing things in and having the advantage of this background or at least the sky since obviously these things are, appear to be below ground level so that's just a very quick tutorial to show you how to do this mapping and send it over to Dust Studio